I've worked with veterans who serve honorably in foreign wars and come home then to a country that is bankrupted by those wars. I've eaten with small business owners who had to board up their dreams as Amazon cashed in. I've talked from moms from Nevada to New Hampshire who lie awake at home juggling unpayable bills, choosing between gasoline and groceries. I've met senior citizens who cut their pills in two to stretch out their prescriptions. And I pulled dead fish from rivers that are clogged with chemical runoff and waste. And I've read stories to children who are devastated by chronic disease. It can all look pretty dark. We seem to be cycling from despair to rage and back to despair again. The country is sitting aside on, on top now of a powder keg. Americans are angry at being left out, left behind, swindled, cheated, and belittled by a smug elite that has rigged the system in its favor. I've also seen hope. I've traveled millions of American miles across my career. And to quote Tennyson, I am part of all whom I have met. For 40 years, Americans across the country have fortified me with their courage and their idealism. But this year, I have witnessed an upwelling of optimism that I've never seen before. And optimism isn't the same thing as denial. We have to acknowledge the truth. We do face a decaying infrastructure and record, record levels of suicide, depression, addiction, chronic disease. We do face an entrenched political corruption and an inequality of wealth not seen in a century. But the good news is that people like yourselves are finally fed up. Something... Something is stirring in us that says it doesn't have to be this way. People stop me everywhere at airports, at hotels and malls on the street, and they remind me that this country is ready for a history-making change. They are, ready, they are ready to reclaim their freedom, their independence.